Well, the parlay went exactly as we thought it would. Eddie ruined it. Chandler ruined it. But it's not all Eddie's fault. We'll explain later. Run It Back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Back. Hello and welcome to our last show before Christmas. This is Run It Back, joined as always by Stadium Insider Shams Sharania, Chandler Parsons, and Eddie. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> Eddie on the end. Uh, we'll parlays at the end of the show for a reason because we have to just get through so many things before we can tell you how awful we are at this. But we want to get things started right away with one of the games that crushed us yesterday, Wizards and Suns. Wizards with the win, 113-110. Ayton had 30, 13 rebounds. And then managed to get in arguments with teammate Mikel Bridges, uh, Coach Monty Williams, and the huddle later on. This was a weird, tense awkward situation Chandler what are you reading or what are you taking from this yeah there's clearly some serious issues here and they they all seem to stem from DeAndre Ayton and and you can even see there in the body language of that video you know Ayton's going back at Monty Williams and telling him to talk to Mikhail Bridges as well (laughs) and and, and this this all started last year in the playoffs when he got benched and then during training camp this 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 season, when he's saying publicly he hadn't talked to Monty yet, look, look, this is an issue, and this is a huge issue for their team. You know, he's their second best player, and he's a young centerpiece of this team. And from everything I hear and know, a lot of people have issues with him, and he's not all the way bought in. He's not a team guy, and as you've seen in a couple of scenarios, talent can only get you so far here. So there, there's a reason he signed, in my opinion, in, a, in Indiana. He wanted out of there. And um, there's issues here. And last night was just a, a, a prime example of you can't be the, if you're a real contender, you can't be the team that lets a 10 game losing streak get snapped on your home court. <laughs> Um, I don't care who's Fair. out. Devin Booker's out. Przingis was out for them. So if you want to play that game, so can the Wizards. But this was a this was a horrible loss for a team that, you know, is supposed to, you know, be a real contender. Yeah, I'm not going to poke fun at a uh, book versus Porzingis. I, I'm not going to I'm going to let that one fly. But they were up 10 <laughs> points in the middle of the fourth quarter at home. They, they were, they were dominating this game in the second half. And that blow up is mid just killing themselves and collapsing. I think it was like a 17, two run. I think it ended up being like a 23, six run. It, 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 it was, it was, it was bad. It was, it was pretty bad. And the thing for Aiden is it, look, he was the number one overall pick. He was picked before Trey Young and Luka Doncic. He, he, he's a talent. He's an absolute talent, but there's a reason they let him wait around in restricted free agency this summer. There's a reason his coach benched him in the playoffs very, very publicly. There's a reason this has happened multiple times. There's there's clearly something there, whatever it is. You know how it goes. If you wake up and you run into one of those guys, a, a douche, you might have ran into one. But if you run into them all day long, it might just be you. So it, it might just be DeAndre Ayton. Now, the, the fact that this is supposedly over a screen that he set and didn't set mm. strong enough or something, like, all right, bro. Like, yeah, that, that's like, um, you no. know, uh, that's like Bronx Tale. Like, yeah, it was over a parking spot, blah, blah, blah. Sure. There, there's a lot simmering here. You can't lose this game. I know Brad Bill just came back, but you can't lose this game. And they did. And it looks terrible. I mean, there's no way around it. No, that's like I keyed your car because you left the fridge open 12 seconds too long. That's not why I did it. Okay, that's not why. Uh, But can we talk about, by the way, I'm just just kidding. Uh, Can we talk about the fact that this is a team whose record always seems to be very high, and yet some of us have zero expectations for them. And then you see moments like this. You still have the Jay Crowder situation. They do seemingly have new ownership on the way in, which we will get to in a second. But as far as this whole package and what it looks like from the outside looking in, Chandler, how worried are you? And do you take them seriously as real contenders? Uh, I, I'm worried because you know what? The, the health is one thing with these guys. It's Cam Johnson's very important to this team. Devin Booker, obviously, campaign. They have a lot of guys that are in and out of the lineup. 
Uh, the decline of Chris Paul is also huge to them because he's not been playing the way he's played the last couple of years, and, that, and that's hurt them. And then, and then, yeah, you have this whole situation with Sarver, who hopefully that's now going to be in the past here soon, and they'll get new, fresh ownership. And the Jay Crowder thing we've been saying all season long, that is a huge cloud over their head, and they got to get to the bottom of that. They got to figure it out. And, and look, these guys, they're going to win a bunch of games. They are talented. Mikhail Bridges, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, no matter what issue are going on these guys will win games they will be in the playoffs and 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 they will be a tough out but when you see issues like this and, and the maturity level like this and, and monty williams he's a class act he's protecting deandre ayton in the in the media but this isn't this is starting to be to become a trend and this is look he's not talking to bridges he's talking to deandre ayton like that like yeah. this, this yep. is this is a real issue and there's something going on that that shouldn't be going on if you're going to be a championship team I love that you can read his lips so clearly. I'm not talking to him. I'm talking to you right now. It's like it's like a parent <laughs> moment. It's so bizarre. Um, but Shams, I spent yesterday reading about some billionaires. We got new owners on the horizon. Is that true? What's the latest? Yeah, so there's a billionaire named Matt Ishbia. He was a walk-on at Michigan State for Tom Izzo. He actually was part of the 2000 National Championship team. Uh, he's very much in, a, a part of MSU Athletics. He's, he's a big-time donor there. He helps out with NIL. He's been trying to get into ownership for a while. He's been talking to a lot of NBA teams, a lot of NFL teams to try to get involved. And he will be purchasing the Suns along with his brother, Justin, for a valuation of $4 billion. It's a record price. Uh, the previous record was $2.35 billion by Joe Sy in 2019. Um, so th this is a guy that's been trying to get involved in the NBA. He loves basketball. He's got three kids from, from what I gathered yesterday and my intel work on him. Uh, two sons and, and a daughter, and he is involved with all three as far as coaching their their basketball oh. teams. So he's going to be very involved, I think, even on the WNBA side with the Mercury. Um, but uh, this is this is obviously, like Chandler said, they've been waiting in Phoenix for kind of this dawn of a new era, and I think Matt Ishbiel will bring that. Um, it'll probably get approved over the next uh, few months. By the way, that's exciting. The, watch the day after this happens. Jay Crowder plays for the Suns. I would not be surprised. You think on that so? Either. Yeah, what are the odds of that? I mean, do we think that that will it will be as simple as that that the light switch goes on and he's back? That would I, I be don't, weird. I mean, I wouldn't assume that, but I could definitely see him being a principal guy, and he can. I could totally see him doing that. <laughs> Although as a teammate, I kind of feel like, ooh, I don't know if I want you in here at that point. <laughs> it's always exciting. I love to celebrate billionaires. Uh, if I can't be one, then I'll I'll celebrate those that are a young one at that. Um, other games that happened yesterday. This this was a battle of the. Well, no, we're going to Chicago Bulls and Heat. My bad. Uh, the Heat Bulls beating the Heat 113-103. But this was big, right? Snapping a four-game losing streak. There's a lot of drama seemingly with Zach Levine and company. Three starters, including Levine, DeRozan, Vucevic, uh, all with 20-plus. Before the game, though, there was some discontent being reported, Shams, about Levine. What is going on in Chicago? Yeah, so there's they've been uh, managing just a disconnect on the court between Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan. And they've had team meetings set up. They've set up one-on-ones with DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine to try to figure out how these two guys can help this team win. There's no Lonzo Ball on this team so far this year, so they're missing a guy that really alleviates the pressure. Now you have Zach Levine and De DeMar DeRozan setting up the offense on most possessions before you had Lonzo Ball. So... Uh, they've been managing this situation all year, and I think it's only festered. Um, they both personally like each other, but when you're not successful on the court and you're not getting any chemistry, um, it leads to this. And I'm told the Bulls and Zach Levine right now are just not seeing eye to eye. And that, of course, is going to lead a, a host of teams around the league, I think, to really monitor Zach Levine, his future in Chicago. Does he become available at some point uh, here in the near future? Um, because right now there is a lot of skepticism around the Bulls and especially with that coaching staff. We talked about Billy D, uh, Chandler's guy getting an extension, uh, but there's even some skepticism about him because at the end of the day, it does fall on the head coach to try to optimize and, and get the most out of the talent because there is talent on this team. We got two all-star wings. They got Vucevic. They gave up a lot to get uh, all three of those guys. And so uh, the hope is that they turn it around, but right now they're really uh, going through it. Chandler, if you blew, if you were to blow this up, I mean, where Levine, first of all, would you just go ahead and deal DeRozan as well? I mean, you just really blow this thing up and start from scratch? 
Yeah, this is the team that kind of I looked to the, this year that if they didn't get off to a hot start, they have the pieces that I would find interesting if I was another team. Uh, DeMar DeRozan's having a great year. He's he's Zach Levine is on this huge deal and he's kind of having his struggles. Booch is a free agent this summer, probably walking. Uh, this is a team that I would blow it up. I would kind of start making a lot of phone calls every day. And look, when they're playing, they're going to win games. Those those three can play. They they're all all stars. Like they they're going to win games if they're town alone. They just don't mesh together. They they don't click. The spacing is kind of off with them. Patrick Williams, I'm I'm starting to lose faith in him a little bit. I was hoping he took a big jump this year, but this is a team they they're, they're going to lose their pick if, if they don't shut it down and start taking the top four protected pick. So this is a team that I would. Definitely Definitely, you're not a contender. You're not going to be a contender this year. You just signed your your coach to an extension when clearly there's issues with him and the guy you just saw in the longest deal with. So <laughs> they're kind of all over the place. And last night it was good to see them get a win. And, and the Heat are a whole other story. But yeah, I I would seriously consider moving one, two, or all three of those guys and, and start going for the Victor sweepstakes. You know, Chandler, I, like I want to how- talk about. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Eddie. I was just gonna say I like how Zach did media yesterday and didn't deny anything. He he didn't he, mm. he didn't admit anything, but he didn't deny anything. And he's also quoted in the story. So there's only so much he could deny. There's no take that Shams moment. They beat uh, the, <laughs> the Heat without Jimmy Butler. They were down early. They were down at halftime. It wasn't like they played out of their minds. Uh, the 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 big three, quote unquote. They ended up pulling it off in the end. But yeah, I, I like how they all pretty much is like. Mm. Yeah, that stuff pretty much happened. Yeah. You know Sorry. what it is, Eddie? It's like a it's like a big three like the Wizards. Like they're all three good players, but I don't I don't love them together. Like they're not a championship big three. Yeah, yeah there's not no, like a big okay. one here either. There's not a yeah. superstar on this team. There's some good players, some former all stars. Yeah, there's no great. there's no top ten guy. So that's, that's why that's you need a question. point guard on this team, though. Like, like in my opinion, like having a guy like Lonzo Ball, he made the game so much easier for all of them. It's unfortunate that he's he hasn't been there for for the entire calendar year. I mean, starting in January, he won't, yeah. he, he hadn't he hasn't played in a year. So, um, it, it's unfortunate that this has happened as far as the Lonzo situation. But th- th- this team, there's there's really no excuse. They're they're too talented. Like Chandler said, like individually, they've got the talent to be good. Um, that's why I think, you know, a lot of people are looking at the coaching staff at, at a Billy Donovan and, and, and wondering and, and, and thinking about how can he better optimize this group? Okay. So then there, there it is, right? Chandler, you obviously know Billy Donovan more than anyone. And there've been sort of talks and talking heads remarking on how this team doesn't even really like each other. And the chemistry is obviously off. I don't know if ball coming back fixes any of that or a little of that, but at the end of the day, how much can a coaching staff force guys to have chemistry with each other or are we as fans putting too much stock into what chemistry actually is yeah i mean coaches have have a huge role here they can you know set up team events team dinners on the road you know that they can have team meetings they can do all that stuff but at the end of the day if if you know jordan Poole and draymond have a beef that they're gonna have to figure that out as adults same thing with ayton and bridges and and same thing here these guys are not young anymore they're vets in the league they've been through this before and in my eyes the bulls just kind of said look we're signing billy d we're sticking with him he's our guy moving forward so you need to figure it out i think they all are aware that they're tradable um and it's just everything's exposed when when you're losing and this team is struggling and and it kind of shines a brighter light when you're not winning games and and that's what's happening to them and like sham said like lonzo ball they need a point guard they have two wing scores and a decent stretch five but they need someone they need a jalen brunson they need a lonzo ball they need a halliburton they need someone to kind of set up the offense, slow everything down, get everybody in a huddle. Like, and they don't really have that. It's just a bunch of wing ISOs. Levine's jacking threes and he's not making them at a, at a high clip. Uh, and so, like I said, it's just not, it's not working. And the future with the pick here going to Orlando, it's, it's, mm. it's dicey. That's big. That's actually big. It's a bummer Imagine too because trading- Chicago's the best. Imagine trading all these guys though, Chandler, and then you still get like the fifth or sixth pick and you have to give it up to Orlando. Like imagine uh, being in that war room on draft night. If, if you're the, if you're the bulls for an office, like you're probably like just throwing your, your, your remote at the TV when, when Orlando is about to pick two guys in the, in the lottery. That's how people lose jobs. 
Yeah, that's that's not good at all. But but it just bums me out because the city's with the one of the best places to play and to live. And I, I mean, Shams, you know, like I I just it should be better. This whole thing should be better. But if Zach Levine needs to go somewhere, I don't know. Eddie, where do you want to see him go? Name just one uh, team Brooklyn. now. Off. Okay, there you go. Boom. Let's move on. I, I just, that's the easy setup on a T right there. Uh to the Western Conference. We journey. Here we go. This was a uh, this was a sexy matchup on paper. Uh, Jokic, 13, 13, and 13. Mm, good luck. Uh, leading his team to a blowout. Blowout win over the Grizzlies. Jaw did have 35. Aaron Gordon with 24. All five Nuggets starters in the double figures. Um, this was a very interesting test of what's going on in the Western Conference right now. So I ask you, Eddie, first, who do you trust a little bit more in this one? Nuggets or Grizzlies? I know that they just got blown, blew out yesterday, but I'm still going with the Grizzlies. We saw Ooh. what they did in the playoffs last year. We saw what John ja Morant can do in a playoff series. And we saw their defense translate as well. Uh, you know, the Nuggets got off to a hot start in this game and kind of just never let up. It's home games, obviously a little bit of a difference there. And, you know, it is what it is. The, the Grizzlies are missing probably their second best player. Uh, but no, nah, I'm still going with the Grizzlies. I'm still going with that offense that Ja can create. And yeah, I mean, you know, I, I have, I'm going to continue to have the same issues with the Nuggets as I've always had all season long until I can see Nikola Jokic not have to drop on defense and be able to defend a pick and roll uh, because that's what he's going to face in the, in the off season and in the postseason, And that's, what's going to kill them every time. Fair. Yeah. For Denver, it's, it's their defense. I think last night was the third time all season long that they kept a team under a hundred points. Uh, they defended the three point line very well. Um, this is a huge game. We know what they can do offensively. Jokic, most triple doubles ever for a center. Like the guy can do everything. And the way he gets defensive rebounds and brings the ball up the floor like a point guard initiating offense is something we've never really seen from a center. And Jamal Murray getting his legs back, Porter getting back. And last night, these guys are flying around. I texted group chat. It must have been a record for the most dunks by a single team in the game. These guys, Christian <laughs> Brown. Bruce Brown, Jeff Green still has these crazy bunnies. So they have it offensively. It's just defensively. Jokic is, is kind of an issue. They don't clamp. They give up a lot of threes. Um, and that's good. When they lock in, they're three and zero. when they don't give up a hundred points. So clearly that's a recipe for success for them. And if they can somehow find a way to dial that in. They're a contender, but it's tough in a series. I'm with Eddie. I, I'd probably still go Grizz, especially when they get Desmond Bain back. Mm. I, I also love that Jokic is just like some old school past generation. He's like, he doesn't like how the other players are dressing. So he puts on his Bond villain outfit. Like I just, I love the whole vibe that he's throwing out there. But as far as passing is concerned, it's just beautiful to watch. And then you take into consideration, Hard. he's a giant. Where is he on the list of passers in the league right now for you, Chandler? I mean, he's up there, especially, I think we give him obviously more credit because he's a big mm -hmm. and we usually don't see people mm. drop dimes like this, but it, it, it's unbelievable. You, you can put them anywhere on the floor. You can have them setting screens, using the screens, putting them on the elbow, uh, you know, his no look, he's just got a great feel. <laughs> and like most guys, they don't, they don't play like this. And you can tell and a good assist and an extra pass gets him going more than a bucket. He never really forces horrible shots. He plays within the offense and, and he is the offense. So uh, he's he's top five passer for sure and, and maybe top three maybe the best passer he's incredible wow can i just say yo yo if you don't have no drip just say that it's fine like you can just <laughs> be the old guy dare you uh, just be that <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be like a these these kids thing uh but yes, it um does. is he the best passer in the league i mean lebron's still in the league uh chris paul's still in the league i actually think trey young might be the best passer in the league as crazy as it sounds uh i've said before i, I think his ability to thread the needle and his ability to see the floors are probably his best tool in my eyes but Jokic is up there I mean and the way you see it from the big man and then the spots he does it from whether it's in the elbow the post or he does it in the perimeter that nutmeg pass is silly um <laughs> I think uh I think the other guy to mention here is Luca in and, and, and that behind the back pass he made the other night is just like one of a kind but he's up there he, he has to be mentioned and it's what makes their offense turn. And, and you know, I'm actually surprised he hasn't led the league in assists as much as he has the ball and as much as he creates for that team. So Denver's one in the West. Nikola Jokic is, I think, tied with Luka Doncic for most triple, triple doubles in the league as a center. 
nice. I, I mean, I think now is probably the time where we talk about Nikola Jokic is, is a, th- a you know three consecutive MVP award winner. I mean, potentially, I think you got to put his name. I think Jason Tatum's got a lot of love this year, but um, I think you have to talk about Nikola Jokic. And I saw this team in the bubble, so I might be a little jaded in terms of their ceiling. Um, but I think if Jamal Murray's healthy, Nikola Jokic's playing at a high level, I think this team, you know, either has the same ceiling as the Grizzlies or maybe even better because they've been battle tested in that moment, uh, although it did come in the bubble. I, I do think this team uh, has the ability. They just have to put everything together. It Shams, does feel like ask, there's a ceiling. Let me ask, would you and your media brethren give this man three MVPs in a row? That just seems like a barrier to me in my head, but I don't have a vote. You have a vote. You have, you have sway here. I, I mean, I, I was, I, I was literally talking on another show at, at one point uh, about Cheating. how there's, you know, v- v- voter fatigue um, when it comes to MVP. But I, I think if a guy, if, if he's, if they, if they get the number one seed and he's putting up just these historic numbers, I mean, he's almost averaging a triple double. I mean, you have to give him a hard look as, 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 as tough as that might be for voters, I assume. Yeah. yeah when you're and voting, not just- when you're voting the last two years, shouldn't matter. This is the MVP of this season. I, but it's I, hard. I, it it's, is very hard. But like he, like Shams just said, if this guy's the number one seed with these numbers, it's hard not to vote for him. But then it's the argument of like, well, Steph should have gotten more and LeBron should have gotten. See, I, I, did, I think we just, look, we all have ADD to a sense, right? We're like, we get bored so fast. It's hard. Oh, let's just keep giving it to the same guy. No, but then I think to myself, does he show up wearing this? Because if he does, it changes the entire <laughs> game. This man is rocking an MVP look. What's wrong with you, Eddie? Look at him. You're not feeling is that, that a, Is that a powder blue turtleneck? Is this what Maybe. we're doing here? With Maybe. The, with the plaid Double breasted? <laughs> I, I guess, suit. bro. I, I personally like the turtleneck with, That's the, clean. with the blazer more than the tie. Right? But I just don't like the grumpy old man like... Ah, these kids in their jeans. Oh, I like, love it. I love it. He's like, oh, with yeah, these but, backward but hats. He wears suits to games, though. Like, <laughs> like, like that's his thing. I want to see Eddie G rocking that to a Nets game. That's what. That's that's that's. that's Ooh, me too. I mean, I could pull. See. I could pull it off. I just don't. I just don't Do want it. to. But <laughs> Do it. When the Spurs but, yeah, go I to mean, Brooklyn, wear a suit. I want to see it. I want to see Jokic in some Amiri. Like, let's both swap. <laughs> like, let's see what he. <laughs> let's see he what could. he does. Who, Let's put Jokic in some who decides war. I want to see how I, he looks in that. He's just he's old school. He's an he's a he's an old soul inside of a young man's body, and it's kind of fun to watch. Um, the the one game that I think we all knew the outcome of last night was this one, right? Warriors Knicks. Knicks just not not even a problem. Handing the Warriors a big fat L. They won their eighth straight. Jalen Brunson with twenty one. He was just one of six Knicks guys in double figures. Um, I don't know Chandler. I know you're on the other coast, but you ready to jump on this bandwagon? Uh, I mean, listen, they're playing very, very well. This was, this is a, you know, keep the streak alive, eight straight. And like you said, this is a balanced attack. When they got guys like Emmanuel Quigley scoring 22 off the bench, uh, they're, they're, they're tough to beat. And Grimes is hitting shots. And we all know about the big three, but I just think this, this team is, is goes as far as Julius Randle goes. I think if he can kind of separate himself as an actual bona fide star and go to guy, which, which he's shown flashes of, I'll start believing more, but in, in my eyes, there's there's so many good teams in the East this year. Um, and same thing with this big three. It's like Randall, Brunson, and Barrett. I like all their games. I just I just don't think they're an elite big three. I don't think they're a contender, but they took advantage of a banged up team last night. The Warriors, they're they're horrific on the road and they have their own issues. But yeah, this was a this was a this was a big win for them. Um, and a blowout, especially going on a back-to-back. They didn't play that many minutes last night. So this was big, but I don't know if I'm drinking the juice yet. <laughs> yeah, I, look, I'm I'm a little biased, and, and this is a fun win for the Knicks. Steph, Steph was in the building. He wasn't on the court, but he was in the building, and, and that's, you know, you feel like you beat him a little bit. But I think this is an indictment of the Warriors more than anything, and, and – if I'm if I'm we're talking about MVP, this this is the kind of stuff that gains an MVP vote for me. The Warriors are abysmal without Steph. They look mm-hmm. awful. Clay had another terrible shooting night. He's he's shooting l- l- less than forty percent from the field for the season, let alone three point. Uh, you you kind of thought Jordan Poole would step up a little bit, but he he didn't have the greatest night himself. They look terrible and they look talent depleted, which is even worse. 
it, it's like you you came into the season thinking they had depth. They had these young guys who were going to step up and be better this year with Jonathan Kaminga, with uh, Moody, and 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 obviously James Weissman. And now you're here two months into the season going, yeah, I don't know if these guys can play NBA basketball. <laughs> so <laughs> I think this is more about them. Shout out to the Knicks for taking care of business, obviously. And uh, shout out to Reggie Miller for giving <laughs> Isaiah Hartstein the, the Jokic uh, anointment yesterday, calling him East Coast Jokic. But this wow. is about the Warriors. This is about the Warriors being really bad right now without without Steph and Andrew Wiggins. And yeah, I mean, hopefully they sit all their guys tonight and and they let the other New York team have a nice easy win as well. And they <laughs> look forward to Saturday and prime time and Christmas because uh, that's gonna be a big game for them. And maybe Shams knows I, I, the whispers are that Andrew Wiggins will be back maybe this weekend. And will it matter? He's definitely close. I think. I think. I think once his road trip is over, I think I would. I would expect Andrew Wiggins. To, to at some point be back, be back in lineup pretty pretty shortly. Um, that would be good news because they were out scored. What is it, thirty three to fourteen in the fourth quarter? I, I look, this I, I am also still in the school of thought that it's one of the only teams, if the only team, that can turn on a light switch. Although I'm starting to have doubts now with Steph out, Chandler. Do you think there's if you had to put a percentage on their chance of repeating, what would you do here? This is tough because I'm with you. This is a team that I'm not going to count out. And and when Wiggins does come back and Steph Curry comes back, this team is very capable of repeating again. So th it's just defensively. You can't give up 132 points to the Knicks. And if with Steph Curry missing, it's got to come somewhere else besides Jordan Poole. Like he, he's kind of stepped up the last two games with the scoring. But I, I just don't know. I don't know where it's going to come from. That They're in dire need of Wiggins coming back. Uh, Draymond Green can't can't really score and do that. He even said in the pregame last night, like just because guys are out, that doesn't mean I'm going to force shots and start doing the, you know, trying to carry the offense. That's not his game. It's not, it's not, he can't do that. So these young guys, they've, they've had reps. They've had minutes. I had clay Thompson's got to be better. He's got to start being more efficient. And, and I think he will, but it all it's coming down to Steph and Wiggins with, with those guys healthy, I would not. I think they're probably the best team in the West with those guys healthy. But it's just they they have just taken us on a roller coaster this year. <laughs> <in promotions. laughs> yeah, it'd be hard to be a Warriors fan right now. It's, it's, it's a lot. But I like to do these hindsight genius move moments. And Quentin Grimes was one of those guys that was deemed untouchable in any trade talks um, for Donovan Mitchell by the Knicks. So I ask you, Shams, how smart do the Knicks look right now after the night he had last night um, for not wanting to trade him, keeping him? <laughs> So you're smart in wanting to keep Quentin Grimes. He's a player. Like he can play on both ends of the floor. That's a guy that you want as part of your program. They 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 drafted him. They've developed him. And that's not something you say, you know, about the old regimes of the Knicks. Like, and so that's why, you know, it was I don't know if they're a contender to win it all, but to make it to the playoffs two out of three years for Tom Thibodeau, that's that is a feat for the Knicks. And developing players like Quentin Grimes is a feat. The thing that I look at, Michelle, is like they were, and I report at the time, RJ Barrett, Emmanuel quickly, two first round picks, multiple second round picks was really their final offer to Utah. All they needed was either Quentin Grimes or another first round pick. And I, I believe Utah wanted to move forward with that deal. If you didn't trade a first for Cam Reddish, who is a good young player, just not of use for the Knicks right now. You don't trade a first for Cam Reddish last year. You have another first to use in that trade. At that point, you don't have to give up Grimes. You get Donovan Mitchell. So, you know, just mm. it's, it's a lot about how you maneuver, how you make trades. And I think, you know, not having that one extra first round pick clearly uh, ended up biting a little bit. Uh, also, it's easy to say now because the year Donovan Mitchell is having, but like I would trade it. And Every single person on that roster for Donovan Mitchell. Is like, <laughs> Grimes, listen, Grimes is a good player. He's averaging eight points a game. He can shoot the ball like he's solid. We're talking about Donovan Mitchell. I would have done the RJ Barrett trade. I would have thrown Grimes. I would have thrown. I would have thrown a Thibodeau. Whatever I needed to do to <laughs> get that guy. <laughs> it's easy to say home. now because he's great balling. Come. But you get a chance to get that kid, and you and you don't put Quentin Grimes in the trade. I'm sorry, that was not smart. They saw something, and besides, you never know. It's not guaranteed that you get the same donovan mitchell situation you know what i mean like great parts don't always add up or at least that's what i'm learning uh should celtics fans hit the panic button i don't know it might be time plus with the sixers about to be full strength finally all that when run it back returns run it back yeah run it over run it back yeah yeah run it over Welcome back, Shams. We got to talk to sixers fans out there about tyrese maxi do we have updates on when he may return so he's making good progress from what i'm told with that 
small fracture in his foot. And he's going to have a couple more workouts this week to see whether he can make a return by Christmas or whether his return is going to fall on, on the road trip right after Christmas. And so I think the Sixers will get a better sense and really determine uh, as this week goes on, as far as when Tyrese Maxey will be back in the lineup, they have not ruled out Christmas quite yet, um, but he'll have workouts this week to really sure up exactly when he's going to be back. But clearly it seems like he's on the right track to be back in the lineup sooner rather than later. They're in a good spot, kind of quietly doing their thing. And then he returns. That's that's big help. How about Derek Rose? You recently sat down with him. What did he have to say? I think the interesting thing with Derek Rose is he's a guy that's been in the rotation in some form or fashion, obviously his whole career. He went from MVP to rotation player, six man starter. Like he's played every hat. Now he's playing a new hat. He's just the veteran leader on that team. He's not in the lineup. He's not in the rotation. He's really just riding the bike, spending time around the team during the games. Um, but I think in talking to him, he is embracing that role. He, he wants to play, but he's also embracing it. There are teams that, that could, you know, make a deal potentially with the Knicks as the year goes on to get Derrick Rose. Um, but he's seen players in the past, uh, kind of phase out from the league and, and really want to start and play big minutes, uh, near the back end, uh, back end of their career. I think he's, he's trying to break that mold and, and be a veteran leader right now. Well, that's, that's saying a lot, actually. That would be hard to do. I think ego wise Shams, thank you so much. Have an enjoyable, wonderful Christmas weekend. And uh, we will see you bright and early Monday morning. Merry Christmas. I don't know, Eddie. If you want to just pay me millions to sit on a bench, I'm in. Uh, that's an easy one. All right, time to hit the panic button. We're going to start with the Wizards. Look, I know they got a win, but prior to last night, they were, what, on a 10-game losing streak? Uh, not the best place to be, sitting 12th in the East. Eddie, you hitting the panic button on this team? I'm going to say no for a few reasons. One, the standings are just jumbled in general. They, they can make up that ground. They can get into the play-in if, if that's what they want to do. And they can be a playoff team. I think they're solid set up when they have everybody healthy and can win some games. The other reason is they have two of the most tradable assets in the league right now. So if they do want to blow it up, they can get a nice haul for Chris Dabbs Porzingis. They're, they're going to get something nice if they decide to trade Kyle Kuzma. Even with his cap number, they're going to get some picks out of that. They're, they'll get some rotation guys. So I'm not hitting the panic button. They can go either which way they want. And they have a ton of opportunity to do it. it everybody's going to want Kyle Kuzma with the way he's looked, his playoff experience, and the ability to then sign him uh, this summer to a bigger deal than everybody else. And then Porzingis <laughs> is basically the quintessential stretch five. He's had a great season so far. Um, I think he's really broke out of his shell and kind of got over the Luca years. And so, yeah, if, if they want to blow it up, they have plenty of opportunity. So no panic there. They're in a good spot. Very chill. You agree, Chandler? Uh, I mean, I like their flexibility. I like their pieces, but I'm only panicking just because it's, it's, it's not good enough. It's, it's not going to contend. They're, they're, possibly not even going to make the play in like Eddie said, you know, the standings, you know, you can be two games from two and two games from out. It's, it's too early now to tell, but I'm panicking just because I, I, like I've always said, this is a good big three. These are talented players. I love Brad Beal. I love Kuzma's game and Przingis is showing me a lot this year. It's just not an elite core. It's, it's not, it's not a, uh, you know, a contender in the East. Um, and like I said, Kuzma's balling. He's going to get a bag. Przingis is, is playing very, very well. And I've loved Bradley Beal when he's healthy. So I'm panicking just because I just don't think they have enough to contend in the East, let alone the, in the NBA. All right. So the blow up, the blow up could be happening. How about Toronto? They've lost six straight. This was another team that had untouchables in the trade market before the season started one and seven in that division. Uh, are you hitting the panic button on the Raptors Chandler? I am. They are full blown in, in blow up territory. Uh, they've lost six straight. The team is in disarray. Uh, they have no real path to being a contender either. And, and but they ha they have young talent to build with, and they have vets that they could probably get a lot of assets for. And the the reason I like this team early on is they were so balanced. They had all these switchable pieces. I love OG. I love Scotty Barnes. I love Siakam. But now it's like, you know, Van Vliet's going off for 40. It's a one-man attack. Siakam's going off. It's, it's not that bad. It's kind of like a one-man show on, on any given night now. And that's not what kind of gave them success. So I'm panicking just because, again, like, they it's not working. They're struggling. But they do have flexibility because they do have trade assets and they do have young guys that they can build around moving forward. 
Yeah, I'm panicking because this team was thought to be much better this year. Maybe not a tier one contender, but they, they coasted into the playoffs last year and, and they showed that championship medal or whatever you want to call it that they have. Uh, they were supposed to be much better than they are. And they're competitive, which is probably really frustrating for them, but they're just not winning these games. So, yeah, there has to be some panic. And, and, and like Chandler said, you know, Pascal, OG, even Fred, those Fred Van Vliet, those guys are super tradable and they're going to be very intriguing for teams out there, you know, kind of licking their chomps, waiting to see if they'll be available. And I don't think they should be, but if they are, there's going to be an arms race out there to get those guys. Yeah, there were a lot of written pieces, I think, in the last couple of days about the value of OG Ananobi and what people might be able to get for him. So that that could be interesting if it starts to speed up. Uh, Eddie, going to you next on this one first. Anthony Davis, we know, is out indefinitely. The Lakers now hit the road for six of their next seven. I'm assuming panic button, yeah? Oh, of course. I mean, the panic button has been pressed. <laughs> we're we're jamming it it's now. Broken. It's, like we're, it's broken. Yeah, like we've... <laughs> the letters on the paint on that say panic are kind of chipping off at this point. Uh, I, I think their issue is, is twofold. One, obviously they don't have what I think is their best player and they, they really have no way to overcome that with their depth. But two, the team is directly ahead of them, the Warriors and the Mavericks. Uh, you gotta, you gotta imagine they're going to be better than the Lakers over the stretch. The Mavericks have been very disappointing, but they're still better than the Lakers. Even the Warriors, as they figure out their month in chains, missing their best player, they're, they're still a better team than the Lakers, despite what they put up yesterday. And so how are the Lakers going to make up ground? Like it's, it's not like teams are just faltering around them. If anything, they're keeping pace with them and they're keeping them in the 11 and 12 seed, which is uh, my, according to my math, one, two, three, four, <laughs> that's not enough to make the play in. So yeah, I'm panicking. And, and the, 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 the issue for them is there's really no exit route. Even with the Russell Westbrook trade, there's no exit route to, completely tank or to get any better. So they're just stuck. They're middling and there's mm, nothing they can stuck. do about it. Stuck. Stuck yeah. is rough. <laughs> I agree. Like every team above them is better and every team above them <laughs> wants to be in the playoffs. So it's, it's tough. And literally the only reason they're even in this 12 spot is because AD played like an MVP for two weeks and, and still they didn't make up much ground. So uh, I agree. It's just not a, it's not a good team and, and missing him is going to be detrimental for the next you know month or however long it is. However, they're only a half is. a game above the thunder. And we both think all three of us think the thunder are a better team. So, I mean, they certainly look better well, right now. That's, that's for yeah. sure. Um, the, the one team on this list, I think for today, that legitimately is a contender and seems to be having a moment right now is the Boston Celtics. Worst offensive rating in the month of December, four and five record. Panic button time for this team, Chandler. Uh, no, not not for me. But I mean, listen, this is this is a little concerning. Their schedule got a little harder. They went on a six game road trip. Um, they literally spent an entire month basically on the road and Tatum missed Ooh. one of those games. And then they were brutal against Orlando that one night. But uh, look, they made a deep playoff run last year, exhausted in the finals. They started off hot this year. Eventually, a team's going to hit a wall, and I think that's all this is. Um, I think they're very talented. I think they do it on both sides of the ball, and they just kind of hit a little wall here, but there's no panic. They're, they're, it's, it's them and the Bucks in the East, and, and they're going to be there at the end. So this, this is just a little blip on their radar, and I'm sure they'll figure it out here soon. Yeah, I'm not hitting the panic button. Maybe the concern button, like Chandler said. This is <laughs> ups and downs of the season. Uh, where I think what we saw in this this month of basketball is their role players who were shooting out out of this world have kind of regressed to the mean just a tad. And you get that. But yeah, they're probably the most talented team in the league. They're the favorites in the East, I believe, even above the Bucks. So yeah, concern button, sure. But it's not even All Star Weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Your panic button is silly and we laugh at it. Good point, guys. <laughs> uh, up next, Chandler and Eddie make their all-star picks. There are some surprises and um, Harley's coming up at some point when we return. <laughs> America's number one sports book just got even better because you can now bet on horse racing directly in the sportsbook app not only can you place bets on live horse racing but you can watch horse races live right from the app we make it easy to bet on horse racing with races going off every five minutes free picks and easy tutorials to help you learn about horse racing bet on horse racing today directly in the fanduel sportsbook app or learn more at fanduel.com horse racing 
So in case you stayed off social media yesterday and you didn't see the 7,000 reminders, all-star voting <laughs> began yesterday. All the teams are in on it. We're going to get your starters now. Chandler, why don't we start with the Eastern Conference and your starters? Yeah, look, I have a lot of issues with the way that they do this. I don't think the voting should start for another month, and I hate that you got to do two guards and three forwards, but whatever, here we are. Uh, my t- my backcourt, I like Jalen Brown and Don Mitchell. They're both having fantastic years. And if you notice here, the five guys I have are all on the top four winning teams in the East. I so noticed. I think yes. I think you gotta reward that. Uh, I don't think there's any way the fans don't vote in Tatum, Giannis, and Durant. Um, and then I rewarded Jalen Brown just because he's been solid all year. He's averaging you know crazy numbers, and, and they're a one or two seed all year long. And I think that's I think that's part of being an all-star. Did you have any hesitation with not putting Embiid in? I mean, he is leading the league in points per game, rebounds yeah. more than KD. Yeah, you know what? If it was just the five best players this year mm-hmm. so far, I would take out Jalen Brown and I would put in Joel Embiid and have just, you know, Donovan Mitchell and then those three forwards and then Embiid. Because of the format, uh, I had to either go with KD, Giannis, and Tatum over Embiid, and I just I think that's who the fans will vote in. I think he's missed you know eight or nine games, and it, it, that's, again, it's weird to me. Like I think that All Stars should be the best five players. Why put a cap? Why put a position? Like it is what it is. But with the format they have, I went with Jalen Brown just because I simply had to put a second guard. And outside of Donovan Mitchell, I don't know who <laughs> in the world else would be in there. That is fair. We talk so much about positionless, and then here we are. But Eddie, does yours look the same? Do you have any differences? Well, it's funny Chandler says outside of Mitch, <laughs> there's no rule in the room be there because I have a guy I think should be there. Uh, Kyrie wow. Irving, 26 points what? a game. Actually, the same amount of points a game as Jalen Brown. I'll say this. like I think of Jalen more as a front court forward guy. So maybe that's why I didn't go with him there, but it also might be, you know, I just like Kyrie. Uh, oh, you I, think so? I didn't put him beat either. And the, I'll say the reason why I don't want to see any center in the all-star game. Like even Joel Embiid is as nimble as he can be. Uh, just keep them out. Like do something else for centers. Like give them a jacket or, you know, take them out or whatever, <laughs> what? but keep them off the jackets? floor in the all-star game. <laughs> I want to see these guys running up the floor, dunking the ball, making half court shots, cross people over. So uh, no centers for me. I'm sorry. At least in the East, I had to get one in the West. I had no choice, but uh, yeah, I, I got the pretty much the same team as, as Chandler. I think it's pretty oh. set in stone. I, I do think Jason is a nice substitute for Kyrie if need be. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. So you are uh, disputing the fact Brown's got slightly better numbers, but your excuse is not your Homerism. It's that you think of him as a different position. Is that what I'm? Is yeah, that what I'm no, I definitely <laughs> thought of him as a front court player when I thought of okay. this. And and <laughs> I think he's an all star. I think he's a, a, a legit all star. I, I think he was an injury replacement the only other time he made it. I think he's definitely in this year and 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 should be and deservingly so. But yeah, I went with, I went with two two actual point guards for my guard position. Huh. Chandler, do you think that Kyrie picks a lock or where are we on that? I mean, by the way, it's not outrageous. Like, his numbers are very good. He's a critical part. I just, you know, he's missed a lot of time, and I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think I don't think he's going to get very many votes from fans either. That would be uh, interesting. But yeah, like, in my head, Kyrie Irving is a, he's an all-star. He's a star. I actually think his fan vote might shock us. I, I have a funny feeling it's going to go supporters, very contrarian, I, I think. I hope, uh, he's, I hope he's the captain. I hope he's the number I'm one saying. vote here. I wouldn't even be surprised if that happened. Chandler, Western Conference All-Star starters. There you go. Who do you have? Yeah, again, this is a whole format thing because I would not put LeBron James as an All-Star here. I would. I can't reward a guy in the 12th seed. I would put Devin Booker and move Luka to like the three here. But again, it is what it is. This is the format. I got Ja and Luka in the backcourt, both having outrageous, crazy years, putting up nice numbers. And then the front court of Zion, Jokic, and LeBron, same thing. Zion's got to be here. He's pretty much been on the best team in the West, you know, up and down all year long, dominating. Jokic, we saw, we talked about the centers, but he, he's he's top three in MVP. He's got to be starting in the All-Star game. And then LeBron is LeBron, and he's going to get a bunch of votes, and his numbers are awesome. But, it's again, he's he's the 12th seed. So if the format was here, I, I think Devin Booker should be an All-Star starter over LeBron but I was forced Mm -hmm. to kind of go with three forwards here. 
What about Steph? Did you hesitate at all? Was that a hard one? Well, yeah, like if I was, if the All-Star game was tomorrow, Steph would be starting by far, but he's about to miss at least a minimum of a month. And mm -hmm. there's just, there's just no chance that he's going to be able to, you know, I mean, he might still get voted in probably because his fame and, and his, and, you know, his credentials, but missing a month or over a month of the first three months, you, sh you shouldn't be allowed to be an All-Star. Starter. That's a lot. The a starter, at least. Um, Eddie, your Western Conference, I'm, I'm going to assume there's a difference. Maybe did you put Kyrie in this one, too, or no? Did we figure that out? I, I tried to. I tried to. <laughs> the, 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 the voting system wouldn't let me. So I, I went with Devin Booker. Uh, oh, okay. I think I was on the high from the 58-point game. I think Ja has also missed <laughs> quite a bit of time. And and I just think Book is 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 ready to start. And all I think he's that guy. He's one of the best players in the league. I think he's an MVP candidate. It's a crowded field at the moment. Uh, I went with Luka. And, and, and much like Chandler, I almost forgot about Steph because I know he's going to be out for a month and change. And I know he might not even be ready to play in that game. Who knows? Uh, right. But yeah, obviously Steph would be here above Luka if need be. Uh, I, I think a dark horse to start in this game, should we get enough injuries and the like? I want to see De'Aaron Fox in this game. I want to see him, mm. you know, maybe not starting, but I want to see him in the game. I want to see Sacramento getting some love. He's been incredible all season long. So, yeah, those are my that's my team for now. Did anyone and I yes, I understand the the injury is going to be a part of it too. Did anyone think about AD maybe instead of no. instead of LeBron? Nothing. He's yes. been great, okay. but he's just yeah. missed too many games. There's no way around it. All right, yeah. fair enough. I'll give you that. We'll take a break. You know what's up. You know what's coming up. It's 9.51, which can mean only one thing. How did we do in our parlay? And why am I the best when we return? Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Santa Barkley is coming to town and he's delivered $20 million in gifts this holiday season to all FanDuel customers. It doesn't matter if you've been naughty or nice. St. Chuck has something for for everyone. Just check your FanDuel app from today through Christmas Day for no sweat, same game parlays, casino bonuses, and all sorts of stuff that'll fill you with holiday cheer. Speaking of holiday cheer, let's see what we did last night, shall we, gentlemen? We had a, we had a three leg parlay. It was my first ever dipping my little, little toe into that pool. My goodness, what fun it is, guys. I don't know why you think it's so hard. Look at this. Flamo. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> you know what? I just Eddie, can you please share share your your night because the twenty six and a half is key here for Jordan Poole. What did he end up with? <laughs> this is like, look, this is shame on my face right now because I just knew it was gonna go like this. Beetle was gonna be the only one to get it right, and we were both gonna get it wrong. At this point, like my dog could have pressed <laughs> random buttons and picked more picks right than me. Um, I don't know if you watch that game, uh, Jordan Poole, he got a, he got like a really lucky foul at the end of the third quarter and got up to 26 points. The Warriors were awful. And so Kerr benched his starters like a minute into the fourth quarter and JP sat there on that 26 points. He missed one free throw on the night as well. He only missed five free throws all month. Um, why do we do this? This is, You're cooler. Like, this is. This you are the awful. you're tortured. This is you're a tortured soul. Okay, all right. This is good. The good news is Eddie, today's Wednesday, so we can do ours for tonight, and then we have three to four and days and a whole holiday to get over it. So go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the Bulls over the Hawks. I'm taking the points. Ooh. I'm taking the redemption tour against Sham Sharania and his reporting. Uh, so yeah, I got them, which means <laughs> the Hawks probably blow them out. So 40, there you go. Forty point win. <laughs> Yeah. I like the body language is awful, by the way. Chandler, do you have any more positivity in your pick? Yeah, I mean, I got I got the Knicks. They they blew them out last the Warriors out last night. They didn't play high minutes, and the Raptors are really, really struggling. I'm I'm riding the Knicks train here. <laughs> wow, confidence. I like it. Just I'm yeah, riding the train totally. here. Okay. <laughs> I'm going with um, I'm actually picking a Lakers thing here, which is very weird for me, but Lonnie Walker, it's uh 15.5 points. He's going to have the over on that. Why? Simply because he has to. Otherwise, what else is going to happen <laughs> in that game? <laughs> so that is this my is pick a, for that. This, this is, is what you would do. This is a Spurs pick as a Lakers pick. I know. What you I know. I it's, it's, it. it's really I weird, it. you guys. It's really weird. All right. Christmas is coming up. Any good gifts that we're giving, getting real quick? Nothing. Look at you guys. I'm probably sending like Starbucks gift cards to everybody. I'm no good at Christmas. Those are great gifts. 
Wow. Really what what a peppy ending to our Christmas show. <laughs> uh, enjoy the holidays with family and friends. Hope it's safe and wonderful. See y'all on Monday morning.